your martial arts movie podcast. Ha ha! I threw that shit before I walked in the room! Yeah! Featuring drunken Thai boxer, Will. Too bad you will die. The also drunken wrestler, Mark. I said I don't want trouble! And drunken karate master, Zero. You've lost your balls. And now, call, call, call. I don't come through. You know, baby. Fists of fail. <laughs> no, what are you doing? <laughs> You're like Zero. A... <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, can't I can't even in, do it. I can't be in character for too long. Uh, <laughs> like, you, you said one word. Zero. You can't I, can't, I can't do it. And all you listen, need, if you if you, you want to know what we're crap it cracking up about, you gotta watch it on YouTube <laughs> because yeah, the visual is is worth it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, zero. Uh, have you seen the Matrix Resurrections? I have because I invited you to my screening. <laughs> well, if. <laughs> I I can't talk like them. I can't talk like uh, Hugo Weaving. Uh, <laughs> oh, I thought you were doing Morpheus. Uh, well, no. Uh, I guess I guess everyone wears shades in the uh, the Matrix that universe. True, yes. that, that, I could be anybody. Well, everyone in the universe also has hair. Well, except um, Cipher. Except for Morpheus and and, and Morpheus Cypher. and Cipher. Yep. So I'm just I'm just completely wrong about everything. Uh, maybe my opinion of the movie isn't going to be so wrong. I don't know. Uh, uh, let's just backpedal a little bit. We just watched The Matrix Re- Resurrection. Uh, I'm being a dumbass. I'm wearing shades. <laughs> <laughs> uh, am I in The Matrix? Are you in The Matrix? Who knows? <laughs> um, but yeah, we got to see an early screening of the film. Um, it was uh, it was an honor to actually go, uh, you know, like watch the film in advance. And um, yeah, we're here to talk about it um, uh, because we are the martial arts podcast right so we love covering martial arts movies um and obviously we we cover the first one you know a a movie that's very prolific and you know like very stylish and we we talked about it in quite a lot of detail if you listen to our previous episode and we talked about the martial arts scenes in that movie so we had to cover this film right zero we well, had we to actually cover this. didn't. We actually didn't cover the Reloaded or Revolutions. Forget those so movies right of, now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of weird. We're jumping all the way to Resurrections, but hey, you know it's a new 2021 release. There mm-hmm. is martial arts in it, so I think we can cover it. But uh, we have some thoughts on that. Yes, yes, for sure. So we're gonna try to keep this spoiler free. Because at the time of yes. this recording, uh, it, the movie still hasn't technically released the world, uh, nationwide yet as a recording. The, uh, the time of this recording. So by the time it releases, we don't want to ruin anything for you guys. Um, but uh, I will say I genuinely enjoyed the film. Uh, generally speaking, I, I think the film is you know, very entertaining. Um, it's a little bit different from the Matrix formula. And we can... Talk, we can cover that a little bit again without spoiling it um but it's uh yeah from an action standpoint i have i have pin- opinions on this film it's uh <laughs> they're not all glowing and i think that's probably the weakest element of the film i don't know zero like i guess do, do you agree with that sentiment yeah definitely uh when we were when we left the theater i think we were both in general agreement that oh uh this this was fun to revisit this universe, right? The way that uh, Lana Wachowski wrote a con- uh, I don't know even know if I can say continuation, but wrote the next story in the Matrix franchise. It was it was cool to see these characters again. It was and it was clever how they decided to make this um, you know make another movie in the franchise, right? Mm-hmm. And one thing that it's very, very notable about the the first Matrix and then the trilogy in general is the way they shot the action and the way they shot the martial arts. It's very, very clear and composed in what you're seeing. We're not getting crazy amounts of shaky cam. We're not getting, you know, annoying over editing that was happening in lots of American action movies or martial arts movies. They were take they were 
very, very influenced from Hong Kong cinema and also anime. So they were, you know, they they sought out Yun Wo Ping, famous fight choreographer, and they got him to do the fights in that trilogy. And it's just so clear, uh, all those fights. Everything is just very, very clear to yes. see. Yes. And if you can tell where I'm going with this buildup, The Matrix Resurrections does not have Yun Wo Ping doing any of the work or it looks like he i don't know it's it's not what it was right no not even close uh, when, when i guess i'm hearing some mixed mixed messaging about the what went behind the scenes regarding the production um thought we had the good fortune of uh, having a very brief q a session with um with uh jennifer jennifer henwick jessica jessica henwick, Jeff, jessica henwick. sorry um she you know, kind of gave us a little bit of the briefing about like what happened uh, behind the scenes regarding filming the action uh i, I guess chas Tahelski had some part in terms of like uh giving everyone you know, enough time to prep for the action stunt work choreography um but it seems like in the end of the day lana wachowski had all the say um, yeah. Which you know, like usually when it comes to these bigger Hollywood productions, you have a second unit direction. Uh, you know, like someone like Yu Mu Ping would come in and you know, uh, you know, basically take the helm, uh, give everyone the direction of like how the action should go. And here, it's it's definitely apparent that we're going in the more mainstream Hollywood direction um, in terms of fighting. It's very jumbled, very messy, easily the worst. Uh, of the series and this is a series where the last movie jumped the shark and we have a super saiyan battle in the middle of the matrix <laughs> um yeah yep. yeah and uh, that was not good but uh watching this movie it's it's kind of crazy how how far the f- action has fallen uh there's action quality has fallen but i want to get that out of the way because we will talk about that in further detail but i uh, I think the negativity is like all revolving around how bad the, the fighting and all the action scenes are. Um, but I think overall, I find the movie relatively engaging. Um, and I, I'd like this. I almost can segment the movie into two halves. And again, not going into too, too details, too much detail. The first half is way more interesting than the second. Uh, it gets to a certain point where in the film and afterwards, uh, I'm like not that I'm losing interest, but it's it's not as engaging as like the first arc of the movie. I don't know. Uh, is that is that just me? No, I as well had it, this the same thoughts. Once we get to basically the halfway point where you know we figure out what exactly is going on with the story, you know why why are we re- revisiting these characters? Why are we revisiting the Matrix again? You know, it's answered right in this in the uh, the middle of the movie. All the pacing, all this, all that really, really, really nice pacing. You know, it it takes a lull, and that's okay because we need to get reacquainted with where we are now. But anything interesting that was happening is now just it it feels really slow, and it almost starts to lose me. Mm, like everything right. in the first half of the movie was just was I was like I was paying attention. I loved uh I loved all the meta stuff that was going on. Right. They were very very much poking fun at themselves. They were poking fun at the matrix, which was which is kind of nice, you know. It wasn't taking itself so seriously, which is what the series mm. is kind of known for, right? All that really really serious <laughs> philo- uh, philosophical stuff. So it's it's refreshing that they're able to uh make uh, make fun of themselves right yeah yeah I, I felt like the i mean the, the original trilogy is all about there's a lot of uh you know philosophy that's thrown into all the the dialogue and and basically all the events that happen in the stories um this movie really throws that all out the window it's a lot more on the nose it's not left for your interpretation it's just like <laughs> uh free will <sighs> <laughs> <And that's basically, laughs> not really yeah, yeah not really yeah whatever um hey and it kind of addresses uh the ending of like the the much uh contentious ending of the third movie which a lot of people did not like i mean all people don't like that movie in general um and it almost like almost kind of retcons it but or slash like not retcon but it continues it in a more slightly more satisfying way um and again no spoilers 
uh, this movie, uh, the first half of it, uh, it it, it subverts her expectations. Like you don't know where it's going at first. And it's kind of nice. You kind of expect it to like, but good. That's what really got me engaged that I didn't know where it was going. Although I understand what was happening, right? We, we see, you know, we see Neo again, Keanu Reeves again. We see, uh, Carrie Ann Fisher, is that her name? I was Carrie Ann Moss. Carrie, Carrie Ann Moss. Moss. Yeah. Fish. They combine two actors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Carrie Ann Moss. Moss. We see Trinity again. We we mm-hmm. get glimpses of the original trilogy too. That was something that was big in the marketing. Mm-hmm. We, w- which was also kind of interesting. They keep on intercutting between scenes of the previous trilogy and the new movie. So you're led to believe that maybe it's all just repeating, right? Maybe this is a sequel reboot, right? They're just trying to redo the Matrix back from part one, but get the old fans on board and, you know, get some new fans with some new actors, right? Yeah, yeah. I I think I mentioned this in the past. I don't remember if I mentioned in the episode, but the the Matrix is the prime franchise for a sequel reboot sea boot whatever you want to call it um because of the fact that the lore just makes it easy for you to do something like that and you can make a completely different spin on it too um so i, I you don't need to bring back keanu reeves you don't need to bring back any character honestly it, it could be a completely new iteration on the same story but just make it better and or like add a little spin to it have a new neo have a new trinity or whatever um but like they obviously went the the familiar faces because fan service um i mean that's okay i i don't mind the sequel reboot because i get it you know you you want the old fans right it's it's all monetary for reasons like that and i think i think it can be done well i think what they were going for here was good in theory but then there's some there's some missteps along the way for me personally mm-hmm. i can't get into it because i don't want to spoil anything so we'll we'll talk about that later in, in the, the, later in the section. Patreon part. yes in the patreon part well but yeah uh, just to keep it general for now um i mean the, the fan servicey stuff i knew they were going to do that in fact yeah. uh the, the first well, half it's built of it, into the marketing too yeah yeah and it, actually it's built into the first half of the movie the the first half is it, it's fan servicey, but it's it is poking fun of itself, and it's actually woven into the story. So it's like it's it's excusable, and that first half is so interesting because you. I actually was hoping that we would stay in the Matrix for a longer period of time, um, and and that's really it. Like it, like after I mean again like not not going too much into detail like. Yeah, you know, like that, there's a part of the movie where like you really are like focused in on that, and I was hoping it'd be more of that. Um, but again, uh, it, it's you know, like once we get to like a certain part of the movie, it's not as engaging. Uh, and then I remember we we start to uh, once we get out of that the first half, uh, all the fan servicey stuff starts to feel more like obvious. Yeah. <laughs> to me and i, I don't really uh I, I didn't really appreciate it at that point but apparently our audience did you know, kind of just eat that up so well, it's um, kind of funny because while we were sitting in the screening whenever mm-hmm. whenever fan service stuff came in the beginning yeah. it felt it felt fine because it you know it felt meta and they were poking fun mm-hmm. at themselves yes but for some reason in the latter half of the movie when we started getting fan service we could hear people around us going, oh, ooh. like I, I heard like oohs and ahs, and I don't know why. Maybe I'm just too cynical, but that kind of annoyed me. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's that's like my that's what I expect like children to do. Like, ooh, <laughs> oh, I remember that. I remember when this character existed. Uh, again, I, I am totally admitting that I'm very cynical when it comes to uh, fan servicey things in movies. But the first half, they played it well. And I and I guess we can talk about the writing of the movie. And I think I, I harped on it more than you did, Zero. Did, did you notice that the dialogue is very different from the original uh, trilogy? Oh, um, yeah, yeah. They it's... don't speak like the like same at all. Like, at, right. like none of the dialogue they, is written the same. Sorry. Yeah, there are, there are characters that you, I won't say who, that you will remember from the first movie. And... The way they speak in this movie, they're not the same person, right? 
that's kind of woven into the plot. Some of these characters are not exactly they're not they're not really supposed to be the same, but they don't resemble who they once were. So like I don't know, like I don't even think you needed uh, a few of the few of the returning characters. Yeah, yeah. I know the original series, original, yeah, the original movies were written by the Wachowskis themselves. Uh so for this movie, it's obviously uh Lana was uh, uh was it lily lily wachowski was the one who did not return for the for the movie um and on top of that we have uh so we have lana who is one of the writing credits and then who are the other writers we have uh david mitchell and alexander hemen uh i I really don't know much of their credit or pedigree background i believe Um, they were um their writers on sense eight that's the tv series that the wachowskis worked on so they brought them on to assist okay so i noticed that the dialogue a lot of the the way that the movie is just written in general uh is so vastly different it's a lot more uh like common phrasing i guess like it's it's like you know the original movie is casual right casual there you go that's the word it I was feels like for. people are having casual conversations which mm-hmm. is not necessarily a bad thing mm-hmm. but when you go back and you rewatch the matrix trilogy People talk in this matter of fact, <laughs> yes. almost almost robotic, pretentious and robotic way. Mm-hmm. But it's in line with that series because of you know it's... some of those characters are programmed, so yes. they you know they, they talk very stilted. Right, right. I and mean, there's a lot of characters in this movie that crack jokes. They're they're being being very playful. And I and in a weird way, like I'm kind of okay with it because the first half it kind of makes sense because of the way that it's set up. Uh, but overall, it I'm I would say that it falls out of style, out of brand with the Matrix. Like the Matrix has like a specific visual tone, like the way people talk, um, t- like themes, all these things. And this movie goes a little bit more in the much more in the mainstream direction. Um, and I think again that it's I, I don't know where I uh, I I sit with this because on one hand. It is completely off brand with how the Matrix is, but at the same time, it feels like it's going its own direction and not trying to be like the original series. So I don't know. It's like a little. It's a bit of a mixed bag for me. Um, well, maybe maybe that's where the whole sequel reboot comes in. Yeah. This is setting itself apart from the original trilogy, which yeah. you know that's fine if they want to do that. Right. And if they decide to do more movies, maybe the next two, if it's going to continue the trilogy, will be more in lines with with this maybe movie. maybe um well we'll see how the this movie performs it, it is fighting against spider-man so i don't, God, I, I don't know the, if it can perform one of the biggest box office you know juggernauts to come along in like the past two years yeah that movie yep. is killing it right yeah now. the only thing that'll kill it more this weekend is probably the new variant that's spreading around <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, no, but the, uh, the, the movies, you know, I, I, I actually wanted to succeed a little bit more. I, I'm actually curious where it could go. Hopefully, uh, the, the action direction will, you know, like pick it up from this point. Cause, uh, uh go, go, okay. Going back to the action from a more general standpoint, it is so messy. It is by far the worst aspect of the movie. Um, oh, yeah. well, I would say the martial arts is the worst part of the movie the Mm. action like the there there are action scenes uh specifically a large action set piece at the end which i thought was okay Mm -hmm. but i don't i don't like the choice of lighting for it okay i can see that um well we have some yeah there's a lot of gunplay a lot of like car chases in these movies right uh as is indicative of the matrix movies Uh, this one has that but i also feel like they're not none of them are particularly they don't really stand out for me right yeah. uh there is one particular action set piece that i think you and i both agree with is pretty neat just because of the premise alone um and again we'll save that for the spoiler section um but outside of that i, I really don't feel like there's enough to really like gleam off of this movie like none of the action scenes really like make me very excited and part part of it is the actual execution and part of it is actually the part the setup uh neo doesn't do a lot of neo shit in this movie 
So it's it's kind of interesting that you know like we have to work with those those limitations. Yeah, I mean, I'll agree and disagree with you. He does Neo stuff. He doesn't do the Supermaning, uh, mm-hmm. which which happened a lot in the second and third movies, and yeah. and it's fine. Mm-hmm. They're they're trying to kind of say like, okay, this isn't exactly the same Neo as well. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, he does a lot of like psychic blasts yeah it, it get kind of stale after a while don't you agree right he's doing he does a lot of the the bullet shields which which you know happened in the second movie he's he does a lot of the psychic blasts i don't remember him doing that too much no not in really the trilogy it, it feels brand new but then it also feels like i'm tired of fighting i'm gonna push <laughs> you away and it mm-hmm. happens in two of the fight scenes yeah yeah ah oh, god um yeah, like the like it got kind of stale in my opinion. Um, you know, because like a lot of his scenes are just him, like the, you know, uh, stopping bullets. And like, oh, remember that from the first movie? Uh, and you know, like, uh, there's really not much uh, anyone else is doing in terms of fighting. Um, uh, that really, like really stand out either, which is quite unfortunate. Um, so one thing that uh, Jessica Henwick mentioned during the Q and A was that like they'll. They, you know, they do what they typically do. Like Chad, Chad Stahelski would, you know, give them their choreography. They would perform it, you know, like uh, behind the scenes. They practice it for several, several months at a time. And then when it came, came to the actual shoot, Lana's like, eh, "Let's just go with my direction," which can obviously be very frustrating <laughs> for uh, for any uh, actor to have to like deal with that. And um, uh, yeah, like, I kind of wish there was a little bit more effort put into the. Uh, action departments uh, for this film because i mean yeah the the matrix is known for a lot of things um you know in terms of story characters themes whatever everything i mentioned before but action's a part of it action's a big component of the the matrix movies and this movie kind of dropped the ball in that department and that's why we're even covering it today because we thought it would live up to those expectations somehow Um, yeah it's a real shame because yeah in uh what Along with what hap- uh, we we heard in that interview with uh, Jessica Henwick is that you know she learned all the choreography on the day of shooting. Lana changed it around mm-hmm. and decided to go with like different direction. And the unfortunate thing about that is uh, Hollywood has been been actually doing really good with action and fight scenes recently because they do previs. Yes. They're now signing off on previs, which is like this is the storyboard or this is the visual you know, the rough visuals of what we want the fights to look like. Mm-hmm. We're not just going to have three cameramen shooting, yep. you know, like up close, mids and wides, uh, and then stitch it all together because those are horrible American fight scenes that like nobody likes in, you know, in the, in the fight scene world. Yeah. So the fact that she, I, I mean, I don't want to presume, but it sounds like any sort of direction or any sort of previs that they came up with was now being altered the day of so that just means like anything that was meticulously laid out and and you know meant to be shot in a certain way was now gonna just be done on the fly yeah and yeah it's weird because we know some fight choreographers who do shoot on the fly mainly in hong kong like that's how that usually happens i think that's how sammo uh oh yeah no a lot a lot of has it Yeah, he just has it all in his head, and he knows, okay, we're going to do this. Move the camera over here. Okay, now we're going to do this. And I think for those veteran fight choreographers, like, sure, you know, shoot on the fly. Great. Mm -hmm. You've you've shown that you can do it, right? (laughs) But, you know, Lana Wachowski, uh, I don't know (laughs) if she's able to do that by herself. And unfortunately, it shows that I don't think she does in this final Yeah, product. yeah, for sure. I mean, that's what, again, that's what those original story, uh, movies were for. We had second unit teams for, you know, for a reason, you know, like that, uh, professionals in, in that category. So I am surprised, but I am also not because this movie was bogged down with production hell because yes. COVID, a uh, mm-hmm. big asterisk that we need to mention. Um, and I, I I guess like it's it's worthy not to like, lose track of this because this movie obviously was i think it started production of february the month before the first strain even uh, like started to uh wreak havoc and you know like it stopped production the whole thing was supposed to be put on 
uh, like completely shelved. Uh, they were uh, they were going to shelve all the footage that they already shot. <clears throat> I don't know how much of the action was already like dictated at that point. Uh, but it seems like, you know, once they got the ball rolling again, after all the actors, uh, the cast members, they protested and said, no, let's complete this movie. You know, they had to pull a lot of strings, make sure they be very careful making the film, play it safe. But I think when it came to, you know, the chopping block action was the thing that had to go. Like it was just the, 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 the afterthought for the movie. And yeah, I'm I'm curious how much COVID affected this because if you think about it, yes, because of COVID, you can't have lots of people in the same room. So yeah. maybe you really have to work around keeping your actors safe by not having them really fight. And sometimes it looks like people aren't really fighting the way yeah, it's shot. Yeah. Uh, you'll have to just kind of watch the movie and see. Like, I just don't. I don't like how it's shot, and I don't like how it's edited together. It it feels like multiple Ugh. cameras. It feels like we're taking a step back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I I, I guess we kind of have to be a little lenient in that aspect but then yeah. at the same time we are looking at the final product right 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 it's the matrix we, we, i shouldn't have to say these things about it um exactly unfortunately yeah. it, it's it's such a shame uh but yeah I, I i guess we can if we're gonna talk about the story which is one of the things we usually talk about first we're gonna have to mm -hmm. spoil the movie so it's patreon time <laughs> listen to us on <laughs> patreon now otherwise you're just gonna hear abrupt cut and the end of this review So, yeah, is that the Matrix? That's the Matrix. Resurrection? Resurrection. Okay. That's Ma the Matrix, Matrix Resurrections. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, boy. Um, Zero. Uh, I mean, we both didn't love the action, but I think we've said it several times already. Uh, the, it's, it's a good watch, right? I, I, would you recommend it? Yeah. So, uh, with a slight asterisk, uh, if you're a fan of the original trilogy, then yeah you're you're gonna see this of course it's you're curious you want to know like okay that clearly ended in a certain way how are they going to continue the story are they continuing the story is this a soft sequel reboot all that stuff you know what's going on so yeah if you liked the first one or slightly like the second one and third ones mm. even a little bit then yeah you'll you'll definitely want to watch this um i like those movies to an extent and I was enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed the first half of it anyway. Uh, and then, yeah, e even at the end, I was, I was still okay with it. Okay. All right. Um, I would recommend this to, I, I, yeah, if you're a Matrix fan, definitely go check it out. It, it, I feel like, uh, I think it's definitely the best movie outside the first one. Um, I think that's the second one I, I do have problems with, but I, I do like that one, that movie, you know, to a certain extent, this movie, I think is just a better experience all in all, but it's by far the worst in terms of action. Um, it's, yes, it's not even yes. close. It's not even close. It, it's just so much worse, um, which that's is so, so weird. Yeah. That it, this is the worst in terms of action, but in terms of, watchability enjoyability it's it, it kind of rivals the second and third right yeah yeah maybe, maybe a little bit more than the third one i i mean i i find i find that third movie incredibly boring um <laughs> but uh yeah outside of that i i was gonna ask this question and i think i already did to you after we watched the screening is this is this a good this can't be a good entry point for someone who's never watched a matrix movie right i think that's just not possible and Correct. I think that's... You can't watch this without watching the uh, the original trilogy, or yeah. at least the first one. You'll just be lost. You won't understand a lot of the things that's going on. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, we're not in, we're technically not in the spoiler section, so I can't really reveal yeah. another reason why you shouldn't <laughs> watch this without the trilogy. So yeah, yeah, watch the trilogy first. Uh, you've been warned. If you go into this blind, you'll you'll just be like, what? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Go watch it if you want to hear uh, another rendition of Wake Up, not by uh, Rage Against the Machine. Rage, Rage oh, Against yeah, Machine, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember callbacks? Callbacks. I remember that from the first movie. I remember the Matrix. You remember the Matrix, Zero? 
No. <laughs> yes. Maybe.